Hey, you know, here we are back again. So, <clears throat> and I'm working here without a without a program, without a net, without a single lesson. Uh, trying to piece together what I hope is a suitable retractable landing gear, wheel wells and landing gear doors that fit and work together at least to some degree um, you know if not if not perfectly <laughs> you know, dare to dream um, so anyway this is kind of what I'm working out and forgive me if I'm wrong but anyway um, I've gone ahead and cut out using the uh, kit cardstock components as templates <clears throat> the essence of the landing gear door now remember uh, these landing gear doors are, are quite thick uh, and so these will be getting a layer of balsa probably in let me take a look here I don't know maybe this thickness now, I mean that looks about right compared to the photographs I see. I think that's close. Um, that looks about right. And this is three thirty seconds, and I've got plenty of that stock uh, sheet stock available right here. So um, that will be the next step uh, to line uh, the insides of these, and, and um, you know, be aware that this knuckle here is facing forward and that this is the cutout or the knuckle on the um, landing gear door is in a position to cover the um, scissor link between the on the oleo strut there so it fits right over and adjacent to that portion of the landing gear strut in other words if i pull this off uh, the, the gear door should sit right about here I want to say to the about this depth and then that knuckle or that what am I calling it scissor link goes right about here something like about that shape and uh, that's the metal scissor link that attaches at the top and bottom of this oleo and compresses with uh, the shock compression again these are not functioning shock absorbers I'm not doing that on this kit right so anyway there's um, that's about where the fitment should be and all of that has to work with where this cutout is on this fairing so let's see leading edge wing root this would go this way like so but it would have this cut out from it in about this configuration in about this location so this hole is where this axle falls when this is attached and snugged up let me show you that so we drop this all the way down and fit that on we swing the uh, landing gear over and remember there's a little bit of flexation here this actually has to go uh, backward just a just a bit uh, in order to yeah uh, in order to uh, fit the wheel and everything else so that's about where it needs to be the tracing that I did of the two doors so we have the landing gear door and we have the fuselage or, or wing root door and they should come together as such right there See if I can. actually it's where I've drawn the line onto this part. So this part's actually going to be cut to the 
line that I've drawn to that shape. And you can see that that fits, right? Some way or another. Actually, up here and over there and across the Canadian Divide. So there it is. Um, this is how they should end up when the gear is, is uh, up, retracted. Um, and I'm, I'm not cutting this door out of the ply, the birch ply, until I know exactly where it falls. And then I can shape it according to that position. So this is just for reference here to get this shape, to get these cutouts marked. And then once I know exactly where, when the, when the doors are attached to the landing gear legs, uh, let's see, here's the other one. Um, and once these are, are attached here, and again, this gets lined as well with the 330 seconds ply uh, doubler. And um, so once I know right where those are and fold the gear in, that'll tell me I can trace that or at least or locate that onto uh, this template and then cut this piece out of the uh, birch ply accordingly. Remembering that the, the key components here and, and here have to look and be the right size. They have to look the right shape and be the right size. The door attached to the fuselage doesn't have to be exactly this shape. It can be whatever it needs to be and still look like a scale kit part. That's This is where my adjustment is on this. Okay, so it's critical that I get this cut out as close to accurate as I can um, and that will leave me some adjustment through sanding and shaping of the opening after the fairing is installed and fared into the wing. Uh, I'm cutting it just slightly undersized to the components here and let me show you what I mean. This should overlap that line. Let's flip this the right way. And let's see if I did that or not. Yeah, just slightly overlap, see? So the line disappears under and under here and traces just inside of this line, which is where the doubler, the 330 seconds piece that I'm doubling onto here that's the shape that it will be and it that's the doubler is the part that's going to go into the fairing the door itself is actually going to overlay the fairing when the wheels are in the retracted position I'm not going for a flush flat all the way around with this I'm going with flush to the insert and this overlapping it'll look I think good in that in that configuration it would just be a lot easier to do it this way if there's some variance between that line and the doubler and yet still the, the opening is completely covered by the skin of the door it will look as though flush if if you follow me right so I'm trying to make life a little bit easier for me and still achieve a decent scale rep, uh, ish representation and have uh, this landing gear be functional uh, to the best that I uh, that I can best ability that I, that I can muster right so you can see the doors are cut and how they should fall with regard to the wheel we should have a look like this externally which is or the way a P47 gear should look. And again with this part overlaying and again this will be doubled out and standing off with the mounts that I use to attach it to the landing gear leg it will stand off just as it should for a scale P47 main landing gear appearance. Hopefully. Allegedly. As my friend uh, Derek Bieri likes to say, allegedly. So we're going to try and get this thing for you, Vice Grip 
garage fans try to get this thing um, to look right and to be uh, to be as right as we can get it to be okay so this is where uh, the job is uh, presently this is our current state of affairs this is where the build sits and I hope that things work out I've got two red and your legs I've got two wheels uh, the wheel covers still working on getting those uh, hogged out here in the center so they fit over the axle tip once it's through the wheel um, I'm also probably gonna have to sand these just a little flatter so that the wheels do drop into the well deep enough uh, there's a slight they're almost flush with the bulge of the tire area but they're, they're a little bit proud so we just have to sand these flat until the, uh, they're equal to and not greater than the thickness of the bulge of the tire uh, beyond this part As you can see I've got just a little bit of room there to work with but these are still uh, maybe two millimeters too thick one for sure but maybe two millimeters uh, too thick yet just a little more sanding to get them flatter and then of course we'll have to do all of the filling and sand and seal applications and ultra fine sanding to, to get rid of all of the uh, wood grain on those so get the fairings cut uh, we'll get the gear doors onto the landing gear start finalizing the landing gear appearance um, once I have the doors attached, uh, I'm not going to have them fixed to where I can't. I should be able to still have a little wiggle room. They're not going to be uh, glued and finally attached. They're just going to be fitted to the landing gear legs in such a manner that I have some, a little bit of play, whether they need to go this way, you know, or this way, or whatever they need to do. But they do need to be attached uh, loosely anyway. Um, somewhat loosely to the landing gear legs so that I can then uh, begin the process of fitting these fairings and then I can pull the doors off pull or actually pull the whole leg off we'll pull the legs off um, and then go to town with the filler and once again once I have uh, these cut out into uh, these parts um, we'll get this fared fared into the wing and there's going to be I still have to cut I'm getting a little ahead of myself so not only are we going to have these um, templates but I'm also going to have a template that comes off of this so we'll have these diagonal and over this opening so I think what I'll do is go straight across almost straight across here uh, pretty much straight across here and I'm debating whether or not to incorporate the uh, have this be long enough and deep enough have it do that and then cut it out just here and then cut the slots for the machine gun shell ejector locations those are four rectangular slots one roughly here in line with this barrel uh, the next one just a little bit further back in line with the second again the third and then the fourth uh, machine gun ejector slot so these are they would be set diagonally on a line this way and I would cut those slots into the birch ply and, and have a piece that that one piece of birch ply that comes off of this piece of birch ply that would go uh, out um, well in this case all the way out to the fourth machine gun about to here so straight out to here uh, straight down at least to the depth of where that last slot is and then back across um, to here and then again once those are this is all in the uh, the spackle would be spread all around the, the over the whole underwing side of the wing here both sides and then that would be sanded and fared so you wouldn't see you're not going to see this edge okay it's just going to be uh, smoothed into the shape of the wing with filler all right uh, the other thing that I'll be doing is once I cut this out trace it on to the um, actual component the birch ply part I'm then going to glue it to the underside of the part and just give it a little bit of extra strength um, that way because of the cutout in this coming pretty close to the edges here and you know, cutting from this edge 
um, and cutting from this edge. I, I have to be careful that uh, this doesn't split or crack on me uh, once I'm installing it. And the best way to preclude that would be to uh, actually glue the card stack, uh, cardstock as a backer and give this a little bit extra, uh, you know, extra strength, as they say in the commercial. So again, I'm working without a blueprint. This isn't part of the plans here. I have to fit this and figure it out, you know, on the fly. And that's what I've been working on here. So I wanted to show that uh, step. We do have the locking gun barrels here. Um, they do work. And all I did was, uh, <coughs> once I cut the proper length of brass, sleeved it with the next size diameter of aluminum tubing, uh, notched um, the back end of this um, aluminum sleeve, notched it and then sanded it or filed it uh, to match the leading edge detail here. We didn't want, I didn't want the uh, barrel to be standing off from the wing leading edge. I wanted to appear as if it's coming uh, from uh, inside of the wing as it would. Um, so that's why it's notched it there. And then once we have the gear down all the way, that just presses right in and locks the gear down. Pretty simple. Right? And it should look pretty good. Okay, that's where we're at. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back with more video when it comes time to cut and fit uh, these fairings. Thanks for viewing. Have a great day.